One of the things that worries me is that people say, oh, now that I could get arrested anytime I let my child play outside or walk to school, I won't do it. And that's the opposite of what Free Range Kids is about. Free Range Kids is about getting so many kids outside that it doesn't seem strange to see a child playing in the park. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with Lenore Skenazy. She's the proprietress and doyen of Free Range Kids, a must-read blog and website which is featured at Reason.com as well as uh, at Creator Syndicate and other places around the web. Lenore, thanks for joining us. Thank you for calling me a doyen. Yes, I'm <laughs> not even time. sure what that means. <laughs> I don't know, but, but it sounds very great. Right. Uh, so talk a little, you, I mean, what you do is you track the insane ways that parents treat their kids and also increasingly kind of public authorities treat parents right. who they say are negligent about their kids. What are, some, uh, what are some big stories that we should be talking about? Well, I'm going to give you one that I think is kind of classic. A mom in New Jersey, upscale neighborhood, had to run an errand, and she left her 18-month-old son asleep in the car for, everyone agrees, five to ten minutes in the parking lot of an upscale mall. So upscale oh. that they had guards driving around. Guards sees the child in the car. I guess he has no authority whatsoever himself, immediately calls 911, the police come, and they arrested the mom, and she was found guilty of child abuse and negligence, and put on what New Jersey has, which I think is a terrible idea, which is a child abuse registry. So if she wanted to get a job as a teacher or daycare worker, uh, the lady who slings hash right. at the cafeteria, forget it. So she appealed this, uh, which I would too. And there was a three-judge panel, and they unanimously found her guilty again. And the reason they gave in their written statement was that they, they didn't even have to list, quote, the horribles, not a word, but they used it, the horribles that could have attended this child. So what they were saying is, first of all, they couldn't even come up with what they were thinking of. Just the idea that something bad could happen was reason enough to make this woman um, a guilty child abuser. So we're arresting a mom for making a rational decision about her own child and her own neighborhood and saying because something bad could have happened, she's guilty. Well, couldn't something bad happen in your home? Don't people fall downstairs? Where, uh, where does that case uh, stand now? Is oh, that, what's oh, right. really exciting for me is that it's going to the Supreme Court in New uh, Jersey. And if so, yeah. I think it's the first case of letting a kid wait in a car that's right. going to any state Supreme Court. What is the, um, you know, we've heard various stories over the years of kids dying in cars, Horrible. all of those Horrible. types of stuff. So, what, you know, what is driving this, uh, you know, particularly where the leaving a kid in a car, I think anybody who's over the age of about 40 right. can remember being, you know, staying in a car probably without seat belts on <laughs> while your mom or your dad ran into the store for something. Right. When did this become, you know, just a horrible, horrible thing to do to your kid? There was an article written in the Washington Post mm -hmm. about five years ago that won a Pulitzer Prize right. talking about the agony, which everybody could empathize with, of parents who had forgotten their kids in the car. And that generally happens if you're going to drop off the kids normally, mm -hmm. but um, I take them today because you're going to the dentist and my child falls asleep in the back seat in the car seat. I don't see the kid. I don't hear the kid. I'm on automatic pilot. I go into work. I turn off the car. I go in and I come back on and there's the tragedy. Right. What we don't realize is that that's the way the vast majority of kids who do die in cars um, expire is mm -hmm. when they're forgotten there for literally hours. But somehow, and this is something that I see across the board in parenting issues, is we've decided that even a second mm -hmm. of a child alone is the same as five hours of the child alone. And at my blog, I hear from all the moms who have been arrested for letting their kids wait five or ten minutes mm -hmm. in the car. And I've even heard from moms saying that um, when they were, they put their kids in the car after they all went to the grocery, and they're returning the grocery cart. Mm. And when they get back to the car, somebody is screaming at them, how dare you leave your children yeah. alone? Don't you realize that children die that way? And I want to say, don't you realize children don't die that way? I can't right. find any story of a child dying within the course of a five or ten minute errand while the mom was picking up the pizza. It doesn't happen that way, but we're arresting moms for that. What are, what are other locations or kind of set pieces or motifs that we see in, in child endangerment hysteria? Um, people think that any time you're not directly supervising your child, if they're outside, uh, they are in danger. And so we've heard a couple stories this summer, one of them went viral right. from your site, uh, of a mom who let her child play in the park for three days in a row and some busybody said, where is your mother? The child was nine, had a cell phone, could call her mom, but her mom was working. And so the busybody 
I think part of the problem is that we all have phones. Right. It was so easy for her to call 911 and be the hero and slash, you know, good Samaritan, which I think a good Samaritan says, oh, your mom's not here? Let me know if you need anything. Can right. I help you? You know, if you scrape yourself, I've got Band-Aids. That's a good Samaritan. Calling 911 is the KGB. It's like Eastern Europe. So the police come, and once again, it's that same thing. Because something bad could have happened to this child, even though it was so unlikely, in a popular park with tons of children around, with busy bodies roaming the place, right. the mother was arrested, thrown into jail, and the child was taken from her for 17 days. Right, and, and, and that's preferable to letting the kid play in a safe park. One of the things that worries me is that People say, oh, now that I could get arrested any time I let my child play outside or walk to school, I won't do it. And that's mm -hmm. the opposite of what Free Range Kids is about. Free right. Range Kids is about getting so many kids outside that mm -hmm. it doesn't seem strange to see a child playing in the park or walking to school. So to have all school. the kids kind of shouting, I'm Spartacus. Oh, it's right. like having all the kids saying, not it, not yeah, it, and yeah. playing a, right. a huge game of tag like we used to do. Yeah. The reason I think that we are hearing about the, the busybodies is that, first of all, people have been told over and over on the news and even on flashing signs on the highway, if you see a child alone, immediately report them. So they really come to believe that any time a child is alone, they are in danger of being kidnapped. And of right. course, if you turn on the TV, that's the story that we hear from wherever it happens anywhere in the world because that's the story that sells. So parents are, and, and everybody, has a wrong idea of how frequent it is that kids mm -hmm. are hurt by strangers. Stranger danger is the least way that kids right. are ever hurt, and kids do very well. And I mean, not. just for the, I mean, for mm -hmm. the record, basically across the board on every index of flourishing in America, kids are safer, healthier, longer lived, happier than right. ever one, before. One, one of the reasons, one of the things I try to, to press on free range kids is this, this hysteria about child danger is so ungrateful. I mean, we are so lucky to be raising our kids, who yeah. and me, at this era in history when everything from infant mortality to kidnapping yeah. and um, rape and murder, they're right. all down. And sometimes people say, oh, crime is down because we keep our children inside and now right. we care. And I'm like, well, crime is down against adult women, adult mm -hmm. men, houses, burglary, right. car, car theft, they're all down. And we're not keeping all those things inside. So you just have to accept the fact that crime is down to the rate it was in 1963 before right color television when gas was 29 cents a gallon. So there's some huge disconnect between the desire to save kids from being outside mm -hmm. and the fact that kids are safer than ever outside. Would, so what about the authorities in this? Because it would seem, you know, I, w I was surprised when you were talking about the appellate court. I thought you were going to say the appellate court, three <laughs> judges instead of one said, what the hell is going on here? And instead they, they not, you know, pump it up to the next level. Mm -hmm. So what's going on with authorities? Is this just a uh, fear of lawsuits or do they have like, they are they leading the charge or are they they captivated by these fears? I think that when you live in a society where you're breathing in this fear on a daily basis, your cops, your courts, your mm -hmm. juries are not immune to it either. And I think when a cop is called, first of all, I I'm pretty sure they're obligated to come right. as opposed to saying, why don't you call me when the mom gets there in yeah. five or ten minutes and if she's not there then I'll come. They're not yeah. allowed to say that. Right. So they come and then they have to have something to do and sometimes there's this such, I don't know if it's protocol that's required or just an inflated sense of drama, but I was going to tell you another story about a mom uh, left her kid in the car, baby, uh, for four minutes. Everybody agrees mm -hmm. it was four minutes. She was in the store, somebody outside a guy came in and said, there's a baby in the car. Whose baby is it? And this mom said, it's mine. She was in line yeah. to check out. She proceeded to check out. That infuriated him. He called the cops. The cops later, the, the, the lady wasn't there by the time they got there. So they went to her house. And with them, they brought a team of paramedics. Hmm. And the paramedics checked out the child. And guess what? Having slept through this four-minute errand, the child turned out to be, thank God. How do you like that? Fine. But when we have not only the cops there, mm. but also this idea that the child was in such grave danger in four minutes. I mean, if, if people died in four minutes in cars, we would all be dead yeah. the first time we're in a, in a traffic jam, right? Or waiting in the driveway for a dad to come out with his coat on. So what do you think, where is the fear coming from? Uh, you know, be, oh, yeah. uh, and, and then what's the best way to kind of keep it uh, at bay within ourselves? Because I think all parents as well, right. anybody who looks at kids, like right. you, you know, you're, you get no, nervous. You do but. get nervous. And also if you have a society that's selling you, I just have to tell you my, there's some products out there that just sort of uh, make obvious that we're supposed to be afraid all the mm -hmm. time. There's now a child carrier that goes up to 80 pounds. 
Okay, <laughs> and it's not for the disabled, which I could understand. It's for children who yeah. um, quit, can walk but choose not to, uh, <laughs> which I'd be really proud if I had that kid. Um, yeah. There's a product you can buy called Tooth Prince, which is you make an impression of your children's teeth and you swab their cheek for their DNA so that when their body is found, um, but unidentifiable because it's been so mangled, right, right. lucky you, yeah. you have this tooth print thing there. So when you're breathing in this kind yeah. of fear on a daily basis, everybody gets infected. The other thing that I've seen recently that I'm very excited about is something I call the Free Range Kids Project that was just done for the first time in an entire grammar school in Menlo Park, which is headquarters of a lot of Silicon Valley mm -hmm. uh, companies. And what it was is all the teachers told all their kids that they could choose something that they wanted to do that they felt they were ready to do that they hadn't done yet. Walk the dog, uh, take your bike to school, make dinner. And children from kindergarten up to fifth grade chose projects out of the 700 kids, 220 did them. And I had the parents fill out a little form, what are you afraid of, beforehand, and then how did it go afterwards. And the results were so spectacular. For instance, one family hadn't let their kid ever ride his bike to school, and that's what he was desperate to do, fourth grader. So when that's what he said, I really want to do this, they said, no, there's a, a street you'd have to cross, it's busy, how about we let you ride your bike to your friend's house on Saturday? That's the compromise that they finally did. They'd never let him ride anywhere by himself. He did it on Saturday, he came back elated, proud, they are proud too. This breaks the yeah. fear. You're so proud of your kid and they're flushed and they're happy and they're hungry and they're bar burbling. And so that was Saturday and Tuesday morning, the dad said to the mom, and it was the dad in this case who had been more overprotective, well, why don't we just let him ride to school? And he did that for the rest of the year. And this happened over and over again. All you need is a little push. Once you see your kid do something you did as a child, mm -hmm it's very easy to let go of the fear because mm -hmm. it was superimposed and reality comes bursting through. All right, well, we'll leave it there. Okay. Thank you, Lenore Skenazy. Lenore is the proprietress of Free Range Kids. She also blogs at Reason.com and her column for Creator Syndicate shows up in newspapers and websites around the country and around the world. Lenore, thanks so much for talking to us. Thanks, Nick. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.